In this example, I'm going to share uh, one strategy or technique that you can use with students that leverages the ease and utility of assignments uh, and the calendar view as well as the ability to uh, sustain uh, a relatively pithy way of marshalling reading lists and assignments. Um, uh, the goal of this is I'm going to marshal two different reading lists over the course of the next two weeks um, as well as um, engage students in a ritual in class about how I'm using reading lists in class uh, so that they understand why I've created them as assignments and why they are non-graded and why I place them on a Saturday or a Sunday uh, so that they can see the reading list uh, the week ahead. So uh, one of the reasons my, I might do this is because this might make it really easy to have one-stop shopping for students to see their reading list for, let's say, a uh, language arts or an English class, and at the same time have a really one place that I'm simply making changes. One of the downsides currently of reoccurring events and some other techniques is that you're making changes in multiple places, uh, which could be extremely frustrating. So um, I'm going to start by using the calendar view. And what I would have done on the first day of class, I'd say, students, every week you'll see on the Saturday uh, for the coming week, that due date, uh, the reading that I'm expecting you to do over the course of the next four days. So I'm simply going to go ahead, um, I'm going to do this two different ways. I'm going to start by doing this in the calendar view. And I'm going to go ahead and select assignments. And I already have my weekly assignment um, all ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, paste that title in. This is a non-graded assignment. Um, I might... Uh, then I might go ahead and use the More Options button to uh, simply paste in the assignment uh, what the reading is. And um, because this is an in-class essay on that third day, I'm actually going to make that as a special assignment. Uh, so now students know that um, every week they're going to have a weekly reading. Um, it's going to be about 90 minutes this week. Um, it's going to be not graded. Uh, it's going to go to everyone in the class. I'm not going to worry about sections. And I'm just going to help pace out what pages uh, and what days. And so if an addition of a book changes, let's say, for example, uh, uh, Foster Wallace's uh, Consider the Lobster, and it's really now pages 845 through 867, I'm making that change in one place. And then finally, I would go ahead and click Save and Publish. Uh, again, the thing that I would do is uh, I would walk students via the calendar, and I would just say, anytime you see something that says weekly reading, it's for that week coming ahead, not the week that I'm publishing it. So let's say classes started on the 22nd. Um, it's over the course of this week that I'm expecting students to uh, do that weekly reading. And that's because students are always looking ahead unlikely to be looking behind, and I have one place that I can make that change. The second way that I would do this, um, and that's because I tend to organize my course around modules, and that's because it's easy, especially as I think ahead to next year, when I want to import selectively assignments based on modules, uh, that it's an easy place for me to organize. My students might use it, they're probably going to be using this calendar or agenda view, but um, I know I will find it easy. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, modules in my course, and uh, you can see I have two modules that I've already created. Um, this is going to be for the second week of the course. I've told students that I'm going to pace out the units basically one week at a time, and thus I'm going to create out modules one week at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and, just as I normally do, I'm going to add a new assignment to my module. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let students know that this is that weekly assignment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the item, uh, open it up, Paste in the uh, uh, assignment materials. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a non-graded uh, assignment, that this is not worth anything. And then I would go ahead and give it a due date. And so this is going to be the second week of class. Uh, so it's going to be the uh, following Saturday. Uh, and then um, from here on, I will have both my modules organized as a way to really help uh, specify going forward, and I can see the two dates are, are listed. And then my students, of course, will be primarily working out of their calendar, um, and so they'll be able to see the calendar um, assignments the uh, 27th and 3rd. And I think the thing that I'd say most that is most important is students are going to be looking ahead based on the due date. And so although I would be tempted to assign that weekly reading on the day that uh, I want them to start reading, I've calibrated for them in class, I've created a ritual that says by Saturday the 27th, 
you will have gone ahead and done all this reading. Now there's lots of different ways of doing this. One of the advantages here is that it's built right into the assignments. It's a non-graded assignment. It's going to be something that will quickly load um, on the Canvas website and or in the Canvas app on an iPhone. No need to go to a Google Doc that needs to be shared, and sharing settings changed, and so forth. Uh, it's a one-stop shopping. It is a cultural change um, of always thinking about the calendar as something that I'm looking ahead about um, and making sure that students understand it. But where students can get most confused is if we start uh, using the calendar and assignments to put things uh, that are due in the past rather than in the future. I hope that makes sense. I'm happy to answer any questions along the way.